We're gonna try and get some of these stories done today. Some, not all. Suffer. <clears throat> By that logic, there's no reason it has to be you who stays with her. Suffer? Don't tell me you have a thing for Akari too. What? It's just the way you said that. It sounded like you were asking Akari to go out with you. Where did you get that from? No. Okay, so she can come with me then. The callus, that's enough. What? She can't? That's a shame. I'm getting excited to get a little closer to her. Oh well, I guess I have no choice. Here, Ricari, say ah. Uh, this is a cookie made with spit with some fruit from the underworld. The cow picks up a cookie sitting on the desk, <clears throat> sitting on the desk, and holds it out to me. I don't know if I should. Can I take a photo of it? Uh, and I'm gonna say no thanks because again, this is this is Bradley's story, not Macalla's story. So yeah, I'm gonna say no thanks. No, hold on. Got to do another photo. No thanks. Really? That's too bad. I feel like I pitch it higher. But it needs to be lower since he's also a guy. And the callus accepts my refusal with unexpected ease. He simply pops the cookie into his mouth. When he does, Alonis, who's been skeptical of serving his actions, suddenly stands up. Cut it out, Michaelis. You know best of anyone what happens if a living creature eats food from the underworld. They won't ever be able to leave the underworld, right? Of course I. Of course I know that. Hang on a second. You were trying to feed me such dangerous food on purpose. <laughs> Poor Gari, you like what the fuck. Uh, my cow is. My cow is your niche. But whatever. He is like a jack figure, but um, not too much. Because one, Michaelis is a reaper, and two, Jack is a werewolf, so... Similar personalities, but different, completely different creatures. <laughs> Jeez. If I... If I had even one bite of that cookie, I'd be stuck here forever. I find myself rubbing my arms, the thought giving me goosebumps. Are you honestly that angry? You must be rather happy and rather happy here in the underworld, you know? The couch takes another bite of the cookie. The crunch of each bite sounds stream strangely loud and the silent room. He's just rubbing it in, jerk. Not long after that, Bradley returns. After his final cryptic remark, Callus nonchalantly leaves the room. Alonis and Zephyr follow him out, leaving just Bradley and me. 
I just can't relax at all whenever I'm alone with him. Hey, Bradley, you don't think I'm going to run away now, do you? I'm sure you must be reluctant to spend all day and even night together with me, seeing as you hate humans so much. Why don't we stay in different rooms for both of our sakes tonight? Interesting. I see you've learned to negotiate. That won't be necessary. What do you mean, not necessary, you bitch? Rose. Mm. He's a jerk, but lower it a little. Fine. Then. Darn. Yawning. Do you want me to go get the soda? No. Read. Then what are we going to do about the bed? Surely you're not going to suggest we share it. That would be fine with me. I could show you one night of the sweetest fantasies if you wished. Are you expecting me to take that joke seriously? There's no need to try and figure out what Bradley truly means by that. I don't find a single hint of emotion or desire in his eyes. You're not fun. You obviously knew my answer before you said that. <laughs> Could have played along a little more then. Bitch! No, don't play with people's emotions, you jerk. Rose? I hate the guy. Leave me alone. what Bradley had been doing while we were apart, but he seems to be in an upbeat mood. Never mind. You take the bed. I have to finish reading some material before. I am gonna go get a fucking soda. You're drinking it before we read Vin Vincent's story. No! Oh my gosh. I have to finish reading some material before I've borrowed by tomorrow. I won't even have a chance to lie down. Okay. Realizing I don't have any reason not to go along with this along with this suggestion, I let out a sigh and head to the bed. The next day I woke up after an unevent night. Bradley, Bradley, Suffer, and I, and I, check out the hotel. Michaelis joins us to see, see us off, and we head to our next destination. Appetite was supposed to come too, but apparently something urgent came up. That's fine. The fewer the better. Are you always so unfriendly? I guess you've got to be a little heartless to be the boss of an organization like yours. Wait, I smell gunpowder. Walking silently besides Michaelis, Alana suddenly comes to a halt. Kari? Huh? Bradley says my name and then before I know what's happening, he hugs me tightly around the shoulders. Immediately after that, there's an explosion in a nearby building. Just like the one during our discussion yesterday. We're hit by the violent storm of wind that it causes. Uh! Breath. We know. It's the way the debris. The debris is flying at us with the sword with a grunt. That explosion. Vampires must have caused it. Michaelis takes out his sickle with a disturbed smile. <laughs> oh dear. What's gonna happen? Ah, and we're at the... Almost at the 10 minute mark. This is the last story ticket. If you have to put this in part two, we're moving it. 
into Vincent's story. It wouldn't be a big deal. A party of reapers should come arrest the vampires. But this time it might be a bit troublesome. When I follow Mikasa's gaze, I see a group of armed vampires. Huh? Ooh. Having come to the underworld slightly before Empress, I head to the spring where my comrade Opel and I have planned to meet. There's an unsettling amount of poisonous mist. This entire world is most certainly headed for destruction. This is in an even more desired state than I imagined. I reach out to touch some withered plants. When I share some of my life force with them through my fingertips, they return to such vivid health. You can't tell they were even withered. As I'm watching them be revived, I hear the flat voice from behind me. What good will it that do, giving them temporary life, is nothing more than easing your own con conscience. At that point, wouldn't giving them alone be greater, the greater kindness? Unfortunately, I cannot understand what the plants and trees have to say. You may be correct. I, for one, will choose to give them life because I refuse to give up. Opals stands beside me with a bewildered look on his face. That reminds me, the Empress you've been searching for has been found. You make it sound as if I'm the only one searching for her. I believe I'm looking for her on the request of our organization. Quartet Mirage. The Empress is our hope. I will wait for the right opportunity to make contact once more. I would appreciate your assistance. Mmm, and one more story ticket. No! I, okay, if we make it to the 14th minute mark, fine. But other than that, I will not accept 13 minutes. You wouldn't give up even if I said no. You know me too well, my old friend. With a thick expression, Opel word wordlessly begins to walk off. I slowly follow his lead. Hmm. Huh? They appear to be the vampires that killed in the forest. <clears throat> the vampires seem to have noticed us as well. They heard. S they head straight for our straight our way but whatever i cannot words they might have come to get their revenge on bradley then but if he would get killed now it would be my responsibility i guess i'd rather i'd rather that not happen i'll go there's no need for you to fight zephyr stands in front of us and holds his saber at the ready they're coming However, what we thought would happen doesn't happen. We've longed to see you, Lord Bradley. We've been wanting to thank you. What's going on? Not only do the vampires not attack, they lay prostrate on the ground before Bradley. All of a sudden, our village was attacked by humans that murdered our friends and family. You, Lord Bradley, are the great hero that, who saved us. The fuck? He saved nobody! I hate this guy. Ugh, and they're praising him like he's their savior. Alright, we made it to the 14 minute mark. Time for Shall We Date? Wish it is heart. Alright. Sweet. Alright. Bye, Shall We Date fans. Look out for Vincent's story next. Bye.